Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to pull up and pull down resistor tutorial. So in this video, we're gonna talk about just that. What are pull up or pull down resistors? What are they used for? What are they good for? Why do we care? So on and so forth. And I hope you appreciate my graphic here. We got a resistor doing a pull up and it says, I did 1K and ohm, get it? Ohm, my gosh, am I tired. I know what you're thinking, Forstronics, you have a graphic designer and comedy writer on staff. No, actually, this is it's it's all me. Anyway, let's get started. So, what is a pull up or pull down resistor, and or what is its purpose? Let's start there. And the purpose of it is to take a node that'll typically have one or two high impedance devices on on that node, and it's to prevent that node or that circuit or that trace or that wire from going to an unknown state when it's not being actively controlled. So what does that mean? Well, let's take the example we have here where I have the Atmega 328P chip, which is the chip from the UNO. And so you have your digital connections, you also have your analog connections. So your digital connections act like a high impedance, meaning they almost act like an open. And you can use those digital pins to read a high or a low digital condition. But in the figure, I have pin 14 connected to a switch, and then the other side of that switch is connected to ground. So let's say we wanted to use that switch to control some kind of functionality on the chip. Well, when we push the switch in or close the switch, that pin will read a low. But what about when the switch is open? What will the pin read? Well, pin 14, once again, acts like almost an open or high impedance input. And the other side of the switch is gonna act like an open. So what is that trace or node gonna be at? Well, random noise from, I don't know, your transmit on your cell phone or other signals on your board or your circuit or your prototype can cause that pin to actually vary when it's open. And we want it to be high, right? So how would we do that? Well, we could connect VCC or power to that, that pin. That would make it high when the switch is open. But the problem is, is when the switch is closed, we would get a short and shorts are bad. So what we would do is we would add a pull up resistor between VCC and that circuit or node or wire. So we have a 10K ohm resistor. So when the switch is open, the impedance at pin 14 is going to be very high. So that it's almost like the 10K resistor is not there. So if we take a, a digital voltmeter and measured that node, we're going to read all of VCC there at that node. But when the switch is closed, the 10K ohm resistor is going to drop VCC. So you're going to be able to measure VCC across the 10 ohm resistor, excuse me, the 10 kilo ohm resistor and the pin, pin 14, is going to go to low. So when the switch is open, it'll be at high, and when the switch is closed, it'll be at low. So we, we, don't, we no longer have an unknown state. So in this case, the 10K ohm resistor is a pull-up resistor. It's when, when the pin is at an unknown state or not actively being controlled, it's going to be at a high level, a digital high level. So that's what a pull-up resistor is. And why 10 kilo ohms? Well, it's a good value because it's a high enough value where when the switch is closed, you're not gonna get a lot of current flow. If we're dealing with, let's say, five volts, you're gonna get, what, 500 microamp current flow when the switch closes. So you're gonna get a low current flow. You, you wanna choose a resistor in this range. You don't wanna choose it too low or you get too much current flow. You could go higher than this, but you also don't wanna go into the high mega ohms because then you get to you get close to the actual input resistance of pin 14 which we can treat as an open but really has some kind of resistance value so you don't want to have two parallel uh, or series resistance values that are close to the same value or or the pull-up resistor won't work how you expect it okay so does that make sense and the pull, a pull down resistor would just be the opposite where you have the resistor connected to ground. So an example would be, let's say you're using your Arduino to control a transistor or a MOSFET and you have it connected to the base or the gate. Well, when the, uh, 
when you put the pin high, you'll turn on that transistor or, or MOSFET. And, and when you put the pin low, that MOSFET or transistor, assuming that it's an end channel, will be off. But let's say you're just turning on the chip. Let's say the chip is just being turned on, your circuit's being powered on. Before you'd be able to set the pin value, you know, output pin low or whatever, that, that base or gate can go to an unknown value. So there you would use a pull down resistor. So that's an example of where a pull down resistor would be helpful. And I wanted to show an example of, of a pull up resistor being used. So here is actually a, a screenshot of a piece of the schematic from the Arduino Uno. So here on reset, reset wants to stay high. And, and when you push the reset button, which is up here, it goes low and triggers a reset. Well, similar to this circuit that I just showed you, you have a similar setup. You have a 10K ohm resistor connected to five volts. So when this switch is not actively being pushed, see the switch is tied to ground, this pull up resistor keeps the reset high so our chip doesn't reset. So that's an example of it being used on the Arduino itself. Well, one nice thing about most modern microcontrollers like, like a lot of the Arduino chips is they have built in pull up and in some cases pull down resistors internally. So you don't have to actually add the resistor in some cases if you're working with a microcontroller and it already has a pull up or pull down resistor functionality. So in Arduino to use it, when we, when we set our pin mode, so you can set pin mode, digital pin two, a lot of times we just use input or output, but you can actually use the keyword input underscore pull up and it'll use a pull up resistor, uh, internally that is. So internally, it'll connect a pull up a resistor between that pin and VCC. So if you look, I grabbed these two, these, I guess, two screenshots, I guess you would call them, from the data sheet for the Atmega 328P and the SAM D chip. So the Atmega 328P is the Arduino Uno. The SAM D21 chip is for the Arduino Zero. So for the Uno, the pull-up resistor in the data sheet, they basically say, they say the pull-up resistor is going to be about 20 kilo ohms to 50 kilo ohms. So they don't give you an exact value. They just say it's going to be somewhere in between there. And then for the SAM D chip, they say it's going to be between 20 and 60 kilo ohms with a typical value of 40 kilo ohms. But notice the, the SAM D chip, which is a newer microcontroller or processor, has a pull-up and a pull-down resistor. The, the 328P only has a pull-up resistor. Now I will mention for the SAM chip, I don't think there is a pin mode pull-down keyword. So you'd have to actually, and, and I may be wrong or maybe that changes by the time you watch this video, but for, for what I understand, there's not a pull-down resistor or value for Arduino. So you'd have to set it in the registers. So just an example, I'm not gonna go over how to set it, but you can see like the pins actually have a lot of different settings. So here's sort of a register configuration example for setting the, the pins on the SAM D21 chip. So you can have input with pull down or input with pull up, input with no pull up or pull down resistor. And this is essentially what, you know, those Arduino functions, the pin mode functions are actually changing on the chip itself. Here's an example of a SAM D21 pin and you can see these settings correspond to the setup. Here's the uh, pull up or pull down resistor here. And depending on the, you know, the, the registers or the bits you choose, you'll configure that pin. Okay, so what did we cover? We covered what a pull up resistor or pull down resistor is for. We, co we covered how in most modern microcontrollers you have them built in. You know, for the Uno, we only have the pull up, but for the SAM chip, there's the pull up and pull down. Let me show you a quick example. I always like to show a real world example of why we want to use a pull up or pull down resistor. So here is some quick Arduino code. I set, oh, I actually don't set one of the pins, but I have four pins, actually more than four. I have five pins and not all of them I set up in the beginning, which apparently doesn't matter. But uh, pin six, I set up for input pull up and all the other pins I do not set a pull up. And then what I'm doing is I have 
I have an Arduino Uno board. I have nothing connected to it. I'm just going to read these serial outputs on the state at the pin. So nothing's connected to these pins. They're at an unknown state, except pin six won't be because we're using a pull-up resistor. So here is the serial monitor printout. And you can actually see, I'm printing out, I think every second or every second in, or two seconds or whatever. So you can see D6 is always at a one. But if we look at the other ones, we can see most of them are always at a one except for D2. We actually have it a zero and look, it actually changes. So you can kind of see it in real time change back and forth. So that's why we want the pull up because they're gonna be at unknown values that we cannot predict. Okay, that's it for the pull up and pull down resistor tutorial. In this tutorial, we covered what are pull up and pull down resistors, why we need them. We basically need them to make sure a digital input or output or control is not at an unknown state. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my Forstronics YouTube channel and thank you for watching.